Welcome to the downside. I'm in a very uh, good mood, which is not fitting for this show. <laughs> but uh, I'm here with my co-host Russell Daniels. How are you doing, Marco? I'm good. How are how I? We, had a we great saw night. each other less than twelve hours ago. Yes, yeah. It was uh, well, a, not less than, but yeah. You're right. If you had been on time, <laughs> it would have been less than twelve hours. Um, uh, yesterday was uh, we had uh, our second ever live podcast recording. Yes. It was packed. Yeah. Uh, compared to our first one. People were there from the YouTube shorts, yeah, which I thought was amazing because they were like, we saw 30 seconds of, it's, of you. It's crazy that their their response to 30 seconds wasn't like, let me just check out the audio in my own home of a full episode. <laughs> they were like, I'm going to go see it live. Yeah. Like, they're not not one or two people. Like, yeah. like 10, 15, 20, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, I'm just going to chime in because how many people showed up to this live? We recording? had like, I would say 60 people there. Yeah. Wow. 60 in a small, in a small space. space. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, we didn't know how be, you know, it's, it's, it's new for you talking, not wearing clown makeup yeah. in a sketch. <laughs> uh, but you, you were fantastic. We had Lucas Connolly, who's a comic and we talked about his path to going to rehab and it was, yeah. it was so crazy. We have to have him for a second part yeah. just to hear about well, rehab. And hopefully the audio comes out. We're praying the audio. <laughs> did you not record this it? Is, <laughs> we, we recorded it. I did a backup on my phone, which definitely does not sound good. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, but I can't wait to listen to an hour and a half of phone well, audio. Well, the other thing too is that there was a lot of kind of back and forth with some audience members who did not have microphones. So fantastic moment with it with uh, we've never had to deal with hecklers in a podcast. Yes. Lucas was saying that he had been sober since like he was 18. He's 36 now. And and an audience member shouted cap, which I don't know if you know cap. Yeah, it means you do that. Not true. Not true. Now I had always heard no cap, except it's going to sound like cap. So yes. Gonna, yeah. yes, yeah, <laughs> and I tried to repeat it on stage to a certain degree. I tried to yeah. be like, "What you said? You said he's lying, sir. You said the guy yeah. who just said he's sober is lying. Great, yeah, uh, yeah." That guy also, when I came out from outside, that guy was there. It was a kind of a group of people. And if you're listening, keep listening. But uh, they were <laughs> keep like, listening, but don't come to the live they show. Were, <laughs> maybe <laughs> they were like intimidating kind of folks. They were like, "Bro, you, marijuana is your limit, dude. You got to hang out with us." And I was like, I was like transported back to another time of like peer pressure. I was like, "What yeah. are you guys doing?" But like, Isn't that I, a weird thing that people do? That just like drugs? No, uh, yeah. that they <laughs> that they'll heckle. Like, isn't that a weird thing that people do is, like, go to a show and be like, I'm going to well, be a part we, of this. Which weird we were calling out, we were asking for, like, feedback on a couple of things. So it Got kind it. of opened the floodgates mm. to them. It's always the danger. You know. But I think the weird part, there's people out there who think that's what comedy is. And I, based on media, like, if you look at movies, yeah. it's understandable that people think half of live shows are heckling. Yeah. Right. But yeah. what's weird is the people who heckle the worst are always after the show is, like, such a good show, dude. So good. Oh, like and you want to be like, were, dude, I hated. Yeah, yeah. They weren't that bad. They no, were no, they were fine. They, they were fine. They were great. But the one thing I want to kind of read on the podcast, because I know people will be excited. So my girlfriend, a very good uh, a manager, a uh, comedy manager, mm-hmm. and uh, she started in stand-up, like briefly, okay. and then produced quickly, was a touring agent, then a manager. She surprised me for my birthday as her birthday gift. She did uh, five minutes of, of stand up. Oh, that's And it sweet. was like, it was wild the way it happened because I threw on one of her clients and uh, Caleb Huron, who's done the podcast before. You probably know Caleb from Twitter. Uh, okay. Oh, what's the, what's the last name? Huron. So funny. So funny. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So funny. So he needed to do a little bit of time. I threw him on the show and I had made a joke at his expense. He saw me at Stand Up New York uh, and he asked me, and this is like an LA comedian versus New York thing. He said, uh, Where's the green room here? And it was the first time an L.A. comedian has ever made me laugh because <laughs> it, it, it was uh, it was just such a because I just been to L.A. and every place there does have a green room compared yeah. to New York where there is no. green. Oh, there's a hole back there that you can stand in. That I just fits you. Speaking yeah. of the pit, they once gave me a gift card because the chair that I sat on there had a nail that poked through it and scratched my leg. Oh, they gave you a gift card. They gave me a gift card and then they immediately switched to like a different system. So it didn't work. <laughs> and it was very fitting. Um, but my girlfriend, she so she, basically he went on, and at the end of his, he started going, "All right, uh, that's my set. Next up, I'm so excited to bring to the stage." And I was like, first thought I had was, "What the fuck is he doing? He's bringing me back." I opened the show, so right. it's weird for him to reintroduce me. And then I thought, "Oh, he's about to make a joke because I made a joke at his expense." Sure. Yeah. And then he said, uh, "I love her so much, Tova Silverman." And and my girlfriend came up, and I was dying from the side. And then like. It would have been enough if she had done like a minute or like two minutes. 
but it was like it was a, full set. a full set. And we were going through, because I'm so interested in the process of it, we went through like the emails she sent to you and other people yeah. and how she built this So set. everyone knew. Well, yeah. So she sent like probably like a month and a half, two months ago, she sent a text saying she was going to do this. Uh, but very like... You know, this is she's freaked out by, it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. going to be a full crowd of people, blah, blah, blah. So uh, but then, yeah, like probably like a week and a half before she sent the, the what it was, the material for any feedback, like notes, that kind of thing. But, yeah, she, you know, so we all knew all your friends knew that uh -huh. was going to happen. Um, but I we was very excited for it. She killed it. I mean, she, she I mean, really it was just so, it, it was she so she well better than him. Um, I mean, she did. It was just fun to like, because also Safe you answer. had talked a lot no. of shit. In well, your, that's what she said. She was so thankful. You had that talked a lot of shit. I, in first of all, she hit it for me her. so well. The only thing that, the only hint that I had, my mic was, one of my mics was like on the nightstand and Tova's been, Tova's moving in. And, uh, I, she I was like, what's this mic doing here? And like that's looking back, I'm like, oh, she was running it with like a friend over Zoom, like holding oh, a that's mic. That's funny. Yeah. But I would have I would have never suspected this in a million years. Yeah. So I just I'll, I'll read it. It's it's not that long without without all the laughs, but I just wanted to, if you don't mind. Oh, no, I yeah. uh, it'd be crazy if you did. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I came no, out here I'm like, no. you know what? I don't want. No. I don't. Yeah. So 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 yes, luckily in my big opening I did talk about her, which set her up as like a character. And yeah. I said some shitty things. No, and it was good. It was actually perfect because I didn't know you were going to talk that much about her. And I was like, because her whole thing's about you. So I was like, yeah. this is perfect. So we're, well, I'll probably post some clips from it. I got to get Tova's approval. Yeah. Uh, but so she came up. Again, I'm shocked. Uh, now, just to clarify, I'm Jamarco's girlfriend and not an actual comedian, unless you count writing half of Jamarco's punchlines. So please bear with me. <laughs> It's his birthday this week, and if you listen to his podcast, you know Jamarco has been begging me to write five minutes of stand-up so I can open for him on the road. So I thought tonight, as a birthday present, I prove why that's a terrible idea. And Jamarco, I hope you can spare five minutes of stage time. You can figure out your new pedophile joke a different night. <laughs> uh, she's helped me. She helped me with a pedophile joke oh, that, that I'm imagine. too scared to post online. It's yeah. that. It's so my boyfriend is a comedian and he tells me I'm his muse as though that's supposed to make me feel special. Let me tell you, being a stand up comedian's muse is not sexy. Leonardo da Vinci was inspired to paint the Mona Lisa. Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet. My boyfriend is inspired to do a three minute act out about coming on my back, <laughs> which is just wrong. It takes him 30 seconds max. <laughs> Basically, I am to my boyfriend what Hot Pockets are to Jim Gaffigan, <laughs> except Hot Pockets get eaten on a regular basis and told their midsection is super hot. Oh, that was my favorite. Just a that was my favorite <laughs> one. Brutal, yeah. brutal. And I told her, I said, like, I was it made like, me laugh so hard when I read that first time. I told oh. her, I, I was just like, you know, the, the regular set, a good set could have ended with Hot Pockets are to Jim Gaffigan. And yeah. then she added a double just tag yeah, yeah, yeah. that was brilliant. Yeah. Um, I try to be respectful of our relationship, even though he spends every night telling you guys what's wrong with me. I only complain to one person, my best friend Taylor. Nothing that bad. She just knows every flaw of his every time we fought and every time he's fucked up. Does Taylor immediately tell her other best friend Jenny? Absolutely. But that's it. And he still gets upset. It says him complaining to an audience about my cilantro allergy is different from telling Taylor that he's never made me come <laughs> and that he accidentally called me his sister's name in bed once. Oh, no. So she, and she knows, and like Tova knows, like, I love incest jokes. Yeah, you I do. I love fucked up family jokes. So it's just like Taylor, it's just amazing. Um, feels unfair if you ask me. The only good thing about dating someone who talks about me publicly is if that pisses me off, I can sue him for defamation. <laughs> Uh, I come from a litigious people. I'm Jewish. My boyfriend is actually only half Jewish on his mom's side. But in the words of both my mom and Hitler, still counts. We got him. <laughs> I think my boyfriend is super hot, but I have super Jewy taste, so I'm not actually sure. Like, my celebrity crushes are Sasha Barrett Cohen, Jesse Eisenberg, and Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. Uh, which is amazing. Yeah. Line. And that's, a, yeah, that's like the head of the Chabad. Uh, uh, some, it's a yeah. real thing. Uh, I have been raised and conditioned to be attracted to the genetic and physical representation of thousands of years of generational trauma, survival, and heroic Jewish resilience that culminates in men who look like my dad. <laughs> my type is my dad, and Jamarco's type is any woman not hot enough for his dad. <laughs> ah, Brutal. Uh, what I'm saying is we're perfect for each other. Uh, my boyfriend doesn't like to talk about it, but he's a comedian with divorced parents, which, if you know me, is... 
Yes. And that, that was Chris. That. Chris threw that one. Yeah, oh, good. Uh, so like his mom, I also never get to see him on the weekends. And then Russell, <laughs> she didn't see your email on time, but you added a tag, which yeah. was so good. Like his mom, I also never get to see him on the weekends. And like his dad, I pay for everything. Yeah. <laughs> which is a brilliant line. Uh, dating someone with divorced parents sucks because they don't believe in love or romance or a shared bank account. <laughs> and I get it. Why would you believe in happily ever after if your dad found it four times after cheating on your mom? <laughs> When I was growing up, I wanted to find my Prince Charming, and I'm starting to understand why fairy tale characters always had dead parents. Their parent died, and now they'll do anything to hold on to love. But life's not a fairy tale. Otherwise, my hair would be shinier, and tragically, both my boyfriend's parents are alive. <laughs> the only thing my boyfriend has in common with Prince Charming is an evil stepmom who came home early, and my dad's on a business trip, and she's stuck in the washing machine, <laughs> at least according to this one movie I found on his computer. <laughs> I've been talking a lot of shit, but one of the things I love about my boyfriend is that he's not into sports. He's a soft, artsy boy. A lot of people actually think he's gay because he's effeminate, into musical theater, and not attracted to me. <laughs> The trade-off <laughs> the trade-off is that he's also not that handy around the house. He can't hang up art or fix my sink. If he wants to hit me, he has to hire a task rabbit. <laughs> task rabbit is what I call my vibrator, by the way. And while he can't put up shelves, he does put up with me. Happy birthday, Joe Marco. I love you, and please don't make me do stand up again. <laughs> she killed so, it. Really well funny. Just a killer wow. killer killer set. So I mean, it didn't run it, you know, like that. It, she just went on stage. She ran it by people, but yeah. just went on stage and it was boom, boom, yeah. boom. Really funny. And I, I did ask if I could uh, have the task rabbit joke to see if I can make it work on stage. Yeah. T hiring a task rabbit to hit her is um, a very funny. That, I was, that was my favorite. Funny. That popped the shit out of me over here. I, that was like my favorite. So joke. good. That's so funny. Um, if I want to hit, if she, if she wants to hit me, it's to hire a task rabbit. Yeah, it was, I mean, you had a great lineup of comics, and I felt like she, fit, you know, like I mean, she just killed apparently it. Apparently you know? someone went up to her the show and was like, you should really think about going back to this. <laughs> I mean, really, like, I, you know, it would interfere with her, her work. Yeah, we had, but. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here, but we were talking to <laughs> but, one of her clients, and I was like, I wanted to do stand-up, and he said, uh, you know, personally, would love that for you. As a client... That'd make me pretty uncomfortable <laughs> to have her calling your clients like, hey, can I run this joke by you real quick? Yeah. Does this work as an opener? Um, so thank you, everyone, for who came. It was incredible. Uh, uh, the next stand-up live show is going to be September 4th. Tickets are available now. They're going to be $10 now. It's okay. Uh, but please come. We're going to be doing, I think we're going to be adding even more shows. We'll have six or seven more for the rest of the year. And I'm going to talk to Russell about doing one or two more live ones uh, for this year because Russell... You're so good. I'm Let's so do it. We'll do it in the fall. So I apologize. That was a lot, but it was such an exciting day. It was great. It was hilarious. It was but very exciting it was day. your well, birthday? Well, it, it, it's, 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 about, this it's Saturday. This oh, happy almost birthday. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to be in Chicago alone. Oh. Just me and whatever sex worker I can find. Okay. <laughs> so I love you, girlfriend. Um, So I wanted to talk to you. Yes. I mean, I knew you from Twitter. Sure. You're very, very funny. Thank you. Very good uh, uh, Pete Davidson impression. Thank yeah. You. That our, our friend Chris, I think it would make him mad. <laughs> Because he has a Pete Davidson impression. Yeah, well, it's probably not as good as this one. I, it's 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 tough for me to do it like that, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he pretty much sort of talks like this all the time. Yeah, he's got like a. You'd be yeah. fun if if we if I build that we hit Pete Davidson on the podcast and I fucked up the video. Oh, and it was oh. no. What if you did time. a uh, no? You did a deep fake. Sure. His face on top of mine. I get to talk about uh, the whole Kim Kardashian thing. You got the impression that I have money for deep fake from these cameras that we have set up here? <laughs> I know. Apparently, you're doing live shows for $10 a ticket. So oh, yeah, 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 fuck yeah. yeah. Jesus, that's some cheddar right there. But you, you've you talked about it on Twitter, and I was so excited because you were in uh, Russell's favorite movie, Ace Ventura Jr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you've always so talked about the ending. What did you love about the ending of the movie? Shut the fuck up. Listen, <laughs> um, so this is what's so funny is that usually I don't do any sort of homework before, but this time we watched Ace Ventura Jr. Yeah. yesterday. Uh, we did not finish it. I heard you got most most of the way through it. We got, uh, well, we were on a time it, crunch. We did run out of time, but we haven't done the music yet. So you are <laughs> Josh Flitter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Josh Flitter. Uh, uh, you are a, a former a child actor and still actor. Still yes. actor. And uh, can you just say something uh, negative, maybe about that, so I can play this music something sad uh <laughs> i feel so pressured uh uh and because of that i um cr uh, always trying to impress everybody and i'm cripplingly depressed because of it this is the downside one two three downside downside
You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezo. Okay. Always good I when have, the theme music comes in 22 minutes into the episode. I have 5,000 questions about Ace Ventura, Pet Detective Jr. Sure. But do we, what do we want to start with? Do you want to like, I mean, get well, into what I'm so like, interested is I was saying to Russell, and, and not, I am of the mindset where I'm like, I wish I had been a child actor. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like a trillion percent. I don't know if I would have been good. The one character I thought I w- I was like, that's who I would have played, was the nerdy scientist in the locker. Yeah. That's uh, one of my best friends in the world, Austin. Played really? That. Oh, yeah, you're he's, so close. He's one of my best friends. I just was with him in Las Vegas last week. Oh, my Is God. Is he still acting? Yeah. he's uh, He lives in L.A. He's still an actor. He's a fantastic musician, too. Um, one of the like most talented people that I know. Uh, just like one of those people that like doesn't, Give a sh- I can swear, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I just oh, making yeah. sure. I already yeah. did before, and you were talking about coming. Come, yeah. So. yeah. I was like, yeah. he said come a few um, times. Uh, come is fine. Shit, yeah, we don't. No, we don't no, do no, shit. No, we Josh. do come. <laughs> uh, no, he's he doesn't give a shit about like what anybody thinks about him. He's just like I'm doing this because I love to do it, and I have a passion for it. And I'm like, love me, love me, love me. Give me attention. Mm. Give me attention. Mm-hmm. So he's in it for the right reasons. I'm not. Do you think were you always like that, or is it because you had like this kind of crazy? like child experience. I think I always wanted everybody to love me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, so I started when I was to give like the TLD yeah, 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 yeah. thing. I started when I was like four and a half, four, four and a half years old. Your parents are in the business. My, my mom was uh, a singer and did a lot of off Broadway plays cool. and, and musicals. Uh, she never like made it, made it as a Broadway actress, but, um, any, she, any recording she's on? Like, no, no, yeah. just did like independent stuff around. Uh, but she did, uh, her, her the thing she loves to say is that at, uh, at the very beginning of Idina Menzel's career, my mom and her both sang on the spirit of New York, which is like a ferry that goes around. Uh, wow. so my, yeah. so cause Idina Menzel's. Uh, probably 10 or so years younger than my mom. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, my mom was like in her mid or late 20s and Idina Menzel was like 19 or 20 and they were both singing on, on this Spirit ferry. Spirit of New York. Did your mom say like she was amazingly talented? Or yeah, yeah, like, no, no. She's she's like, she was a little pitchy. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom's great about it. Yeah, she's, uh, uh, I, I don't know if they ever like at the same time, but it was you know, like yeah. one would and then the other, but she just always says it. It's like, oh yeah, we both sang at the same time and the Spirit of New York. So I don't know. I mean, she could be talking about Adele Dazeem and not Adina Menzel. Yeah, sure, yeah, I'm sure, not totally yeah. sure. But anyway, so I so I started when I was like four and a half years old. My and my uh, uh, Tamara Markowitz is her name. She's a, a, a manager, still a, a child talent manager in New Jersey. I grew up in Marlboro, New Jersey, and uh, she had called my mom because her daughter wanted to have a play date with my brother. Uh, they were like seven years old, and it, her caller ID said TM Talent agency and my mom was like what is this uh and she was like oh i'm also a children's talent manager and my mom Uh, was like well i have this four-year-old uh and now was your older brother just no good yeah he's terrible (laughs) no my mom like tried with him and he didn't want to do it and my parents were never like forcing us yeah she was like let's try this he hated it and was it was as soon as he started he was done sure um so I always like I was just always trying to make everybody laugh, and I would I would do this bit when I was like five years old to try to make my grandparents laugh. Uh, I would pretend I was the old person on the Titanic. Uh, in in the movie Titanic, they show this old person when the ship is sinking, and the old person's like trying to make it, and yeah. they have like a walker, and I would do this impression of this person to crack my grandparents up. I'd be like, oh. I'm gonna die. I was like five years old. That's a really dark <laughs> bit. For yeah, 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 for a five year old. Yeah. So uh, I always <laughs> wanted to be silly and and make people laugh. Did grandparents like it? Did they go, "What the fuck"? No. Oh, they loved it. They were all Jewish grandparents. They okay. were like, "This is yeah. great. This is amazing." Um, everything I did to them was great and amazing. Sure, sure. Um, but that was also objectively. Amazing. I think you could yeah. do the character now. I could I do it right now. Oh, Jeremy didn't fucking die! And then <laughs> it's killing its shows. Oh my God, do that. Um, so uh, my mom brought me over and, and Tamara was like, he's hilarious and adorable and I'm a very short person. And at the time I was really tiny for a five-year-old uh, or four-year-old, whatever. And uh, she was like, he could easily book like two-year-old roles where they need... That's like so funny. Two-year-old roles with a four-year-old brain. Yeah, because you can talk you know, they to they a four-year-old. Like, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, that's like, so funny that like now I'm like you know like 
25 sometimes, you know, if I shave, 25. But to be like four, you could play two. Four, yeah, you could play oh, two. Yeah, you two yeah. Cut it in half. And you the two year old's like, you know, he's fucking ancient. <laughs> yeah. I was there with a cigarette, like, <laughs> yeah. I've been around this bitch for so long. Uh, so I, I w- started working immediately. I was booking commercials left and right just because I loved doing it and I, I was a ham in the room. Did but you, now, did your parents have like, Good money, or did this change the game? Like, were you the breadwinner in the family? No, they did. They my my mom was uh, she wasn't my manager or anything. She just traveled with me, and my dad had a, a good job that he could just. It was sure. a nine to five, and and we lived in like suburban New Jersey, so yeah. we were. What did they do? Like, I just can't imagine like having a kid, and all of a sudden, you know, my kid brings in fifty grand, and it's like, well. Right. Do we get to put this into? They were. They put everything immediately into like savings for me. They're amazing. Wow. Yes. Yeah. They're that's amazing. Great. That's a great child yeah. actor story. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like yeah. It's usually not associated. That's not with, what I'd be doing. Yeah. I mean, no. I put it into things for us. <laughs> I'd be a like, okay, okay, we want a new pool in the backyard, Josh. We're putting it back here. You want a pool or not, Josh? Well, it's weird because now I'm realizing it like now I'm realizing growing up, like all of a sudden we did have a pool. We got a pool table in the basement. We got the kitchen redone. Maybe they did dip into some of my uh, earnings. I'm I'm kidding. I would give I would give (laughs) I would give my kid the money in cash, and then we go out to dinner, and I would just every time be like, oh shit, I left my wallet. Mm. Josh, you have the Josh. You got the check, and I'd be there, cigarette still hanging out of my mouth, five years old. Like, yeah, I got you guys. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So you're doing commercials. What was the first big like boom thing? I did a commercial that at the time. So this was I'm 20. I'm gonna be 28 next week. Um, So I would. This was 24 years ago. Um, I did a commercial that like pre internet boom. uh, It was for Office Depot. And the whole bit was that it was adults, or it was kids pretending they were adults Classic working, uh, and and they were in like an office building, and they were saying all adult shit. And uh, the last bit is I'm by a water cooler. It's like the 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 button at the end of the commercial is this kid's like, "Hey, you want to golf this weekend?" And I'm like, "Can't. It's my weekend with the kids." And it's this bit where I'm like a divorced dad. Yeah, it's also and implying that four year olds having sex. No, it's not doing that, John Marco. It was a cute commercial. <laughs> Come on. But as cute as it was, they got a lot of people mad. Okay. Because not because of that. <laughs> Why? What was the thing? Because it was like, oh, we're making a joke about like divorced parents and they're dreading spending time with their kids and we're having oh, kids. Oh god, do imagine this. getting mad about that in nineteen ninety whatever. Yeah, like, this was like nineteen ninety nine or two thousand. Oh, the things we get mad about. That's why when people get mad at things, I don't know how they don't look at history and go like, "Oh, I'm gonna look like an idiot in yeah. twenty years. Yeah, I'm gonna look like such a fucking loser." Yeah. No well, no one knew about it until right about Aunt Jemima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Syrup. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it's so stupid things we get mad about. Um, and no one's gonna know about it until I just brought it up now. So now those people, if they are watching this, are gonna be like, "Oh fuck." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought everyone forgot about that. I got mad. We have at a lot yeah. of sixty year old listeners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, the, the, the first the first movie role that I did, if that's what you were asking. Unless well, you had like, question yeah, about I mean, that's a big, you know, but yeah, first, like, whoa, 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 we're up the game. You know, um, I did a, a small part in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh. Well, can I say that's what I looked at, at your filmography, and I feel like maybe this is like a child actor thing. It's just like wild, the different <laughs> levels of movies that you do. Yeah, dude. I was like in, Eternal Sunshine. Yeah. Uh, arguably Ace the Ventura best Jr. movie of all so time. Two, like, big, amazing movies. Yeah. And then <laughs> all these, it's just like a wide gamut of things. No, I was in arguably the greatest movie of all time with Eternal Sunshine on the Spotless Mind. It's always put in the list of like top ten. One of yeah. and then I was it? in yeah, oh yeah, greatest. Yeah. And then yeah. I was in the greatest movie of all time, which is Ace Ventura Jr. Ace Ventura yeah, Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Who did, did Charlie Kaufman direct Eternal Sunshine? He did. Yeah. He or no? Did. Uh, oh shit. Or is it Michael uh, Gondry? Uh, Gondry. Gondry. It was Gondry. Okay. Yeah. Um, Charlie Kaufman just wrote it. Yes. And yeah. how old were you for that? Uh, seven. Okay, so Six. that was still pretty early. Yeah, like. the first like big movie role I haven't gotten to, but that was the first like movie that I did that yeah. was like, oh, this is a big deal. Uh-huh. Uh, it was one and scene. You're seven, that's crazy. Yeah. It, yeah, it was it was super fun, and I, I do remember your question or your question about like wanting to be a child actor because we're gonna get to that. Yeah, because I really listen, and I've seen. Uh, we've talked about for the Hollywood Complex, maybe it's called. It's a documentary oh, God. on Amazon. It's about like the. There's some uh, hotel or condo that all these kids with their parents go for like pilot. Oh, uh, was it the Oakwoods? 
Maybe it might there was be, the Oakwood like Apartments the, yeah, was like famous. This, I stayed there for a little while. Yeah, oh, yeah it's, that it's just brutal. Is, it's just you know they're all getting scammed by all these organizations. Sure. And there's some stuff. There's some stuff that uh, we were good enough to or lucky, lucky enough and smart enough to stay out of. But I went to the Young Artist Awards once, uh-huh. which is just you just you literally pay to go, sure. and then they just like tell you that your kids are great. Yeah, that's again. It's just that, a, it's literally just a scam. Like now, are you? You're making good money. Yeah. I mean, at this point, like, I don't know. I mean, if whether child actors have like a really good rate, <laughs> or whether you're all just working scale. Well, it used to be so in the early 2000s. It was. It wasn't like it is now. Now they're like, oh, we could just hire some kid off TikTok and pay him 500 bucks and buy sure. him out for a commercial. Back then, you were like making money. Like mm-hmm. it was. You were. Your agents would be like, hey, you want my client for this commercial? He's like the most sought after client uh for like commercials right now you're gonna pay them and you're gonna pay them good yeah and they were like yeah "Yeah, absolutely like it'd be like oh we're geico we have that money you know yeah yeah, yeah. i had a friend who did a commercial i don't want to uh i never did a geico commercial and they probably are good people i don't want to fucking bad mouth anybody they're definitely not good people (laughs) (laughs) i mean the casting the 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 casting people i'm sure are wonderful yeah um (laughs) but uh i had a friend do a commercial for a huge huge company last year and Uh he got paid like a scale rate and then was bought out and that commercial would have in residuals paid 20 years ago he would have made like 50 60 grand off yeah yeah and he made like 1200 bucks because they they bought him out for the year we're like here's we're buying out your contract and there's nothing any actors can do about it they just have to be like okay and i think the one thing for people listening and being like shut the fuck up twelve hundred dollars for a day's work it's more just like acting sucks yeah and commercials were the one way that you could like make enough money to get through book one all the other tribe i'm good for a year or two exactly and and it's there's you know it's not an easy thing to do it's not like you know it's not going to the office once a day, you know. And when I booked, I did I did a campaign a couple years ago for General Electric, and luckily it paid very well, but they l- incorporated live appearances, okay. and that's where the money was, really? like, absurd. Like, flying yeah, me to Vegas were... so I could go on stage and be like, hi, I'm the guy. Yeah. Why don't that I was remember this? I don't remember you doing How many people do you think you killed because of your, your like your role in G that I killed like yeah, people like, who were like fired? by way of no like by way of you <laughs> making them money and then them oh I see I see what's your G is a ethical company um, I'm sure I don't know just like Geico yeah the funniest thought I was at a live gig in Boca Raton uh, and I heard certainly there were deaths there yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's some dead sex workers in the water now. Uh, they, I heard some of the employees, like high up employees, complaining that I got more FaceTime with the CEO than they did. Mm. They were like, the fucking hammer guy got more time. The with, hammer with guy. Jeffrey. Well, you were the face of the company, I so mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah. So okay, so so okay, so then what was you're the, doing? Eternal Sunshine. Yes. You're seven. What's the school system? You're homeschooled. I no, I stayed in public school the entire time. How? You must be missing days. Did you, I would yeah. miss. So my school system was fucking awesome. Uh, they were super supportive. I came from a town that was like weirdly had multiple people became like successful uh-huh. in different ways from that town. Uh, Cal Penn is from uh-huh. my town in uh-huh. New Jersey. Uh, Jim Nance. The sportscaster oh, yeah. okay. is uh, Joe Klecko, who was on the Jets. So, like, there was a lot of people who were, like, made it into any kind well, of Because you're near New York, I, I imagine. I have a question. Right? Yeah. Were you, were kids in school weird or cool? Or were you, like, Super, the guy in school? It was, it was, it was a mix. Uh, all of my friends were just, it was like, oh, cool, Josh is an actor and that's what he does. All these six-year-olds also... being like, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is the greatest romantic. <laughs> With cigarettes no, in their mouth. Like, romance so well. You know, when you get into, like, middle school time and you're doing Ace Ventura, oh, that's we'll, oh, like. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I feel like, I feel like people could be, like, sure. you know. This there were a lot of, of, oh, lot of dead sex workers actor. once we got to middle school. Cool. Um, no, uh, the uh, I, it, so the first big movie role that I did was the greatest game ever played, which was uh, that it was a golf movie with Shia LaBeouf, uh, where he played. It was based off of the 1913 U.S. Open, like true story, uh, where this kid who's 18 years old wins the U.S. Open uh, over all these successful British golfers, um, and he gets this caddy who's just this nine year old kid off the street because he can't afford a caddy. And the kid that he was going to hire gets caught by a truant officer because he's skipping school. So his little brother, who I end up playing, just shows up, and then the kid wins the U.S. Open. 
uh-huh. and it's just an unbelievable story. But it's a uh, it's a really fun, sweet movie. Are you still friends with Shia? I not friends with him, but I've seen him like twice in the last like five years, and it's nice every time that we get to see each other. But yeah, yeah, he seems a little little wacky. He's he's going through some shit for a while. Yeah, it's his friend, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I it's tough. <laughs> It's tough to no, like. I'm not trying here. to no, talk know, shit no, about no, Shia. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's very public, and yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what I will say about him that's like I'm not making excuses by any means because some of the shit that's uh, alleged is not good. But the guy's a troubled guy. Like he's just yeah. had like a really troubled child. I mean, did you guys see Honey Boy? That I movie didn't that see. It. I heard what about was that it. about him. He wrote about, isn't it? Didn't he, he wrote it? it? And he wrote it's about his based on his own life. I think. Oh, I see. Yeah, he was he. Had Again, though, I'd kill for his life. Essentially raised himself. <laughs> to be even Stevens. <laughs> to be even Stevens. <laughs> to be even Stevens. Uh, he, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, wow. But so, he was a sweetheart filming yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and really took me on as like a little brother. Like when we were making the movie, he was 18 and I was like 10. And he would call my mom, mom. Like he, he just became like a part of our family for those couple of months. And it was just a really 18, sweet. Let me tell you something. If I called a 10-year-old's mom, mom, and I was 18... That's a little weird. I don't know. It's just like if I you, saw your mom. Are you said, insinuating if I that Shia LaBeouf wanted to bang my mom? Yeah, we were. We don't know. We weren't there. We don't know what the bond was. If who are we to judge? Okay, if if your mom, if I met your mom and I said, uh-huh. and I said, Mom, well, we, uh, did, were we filming for two months with her? Like, was she We've around? We've known each other very well. well. But she's not around like every him. day. <laughs> she's not around every day. What you know what I mean? Like, she's not here in, in sitting in the other room while we're doing right, this yeah, podcast yeah. every day. And then, like, you're saying then, us things. Then, she, it would, mom, then you would find was probably doing nice things for Shia LaBeouf. She probably was like, she was like, wonderful. She was probably like bringing him water once in a while. Like, sure. you know, yeah, like, sure. like, she would give him advice because he would bring him be stupid shit. Water. I know, he clearly needed like a parental things, and he has good parents. So I, I don't think it's the craziest thing Thank in the world. You. I'm a Thank big Shia LaBeouf. You. Listen, great actor, great actor. Listen. So, okay, so you did that <laughs> big break. Yes. And are you. Are you cool as a cucumber? Do you feel anxiety? Do you feel like, are you like, fuck, I got to get to the next no, level? No, I've literally thought I was the greatest person in the world. <laughs> like, were you were you nice or were you a little bit I of a diva? I was super nice, but I, uh, I was super nice. I totally was aware of all that was happening and how insane it was and how lucky I was. Yeah. But I certainly was like, diva's the wrong word. It was more of just like, that was what I started to learn was normal. Sure. So I was like expecting it. I I wasn't expecting to like be. I wasn't like give me a grilled cheese, and if you don't get it to me, I'm gonna fire you. It was more like where the fuck is my grilled cheese? Where it's like when I wasn't when I wasn't working, I was like, why am I not working? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. weird. Yeah, now we're getting to like the sad yeah, part, yeah. which yeah. is what that, we'll talk that's about. What we're, yeah, yeah, because that's that's what it ended up becoming. Uh, because I so so th- as the story goes, I I did greatest game ever played. I I got my uh, new manager because of that movie, and then because of that movie, I got uh, Nancy Drew and then Licensed to Wed, which filmed back to back. Wow! Uh, so that was me at like the height of Licensed it was like to Wed bang, bang. Robin Williams, yep. John Krasinski, if yep. I remember correctly. Wow! Yes. Wow! wow. Wow, that's incredible. I, I have a good movie trivia in mind. I'm just, I was just really sad. I mean, once we hit the Shia LaBeouf movie, I'm like, all right, that's more credits than I have now. <laughs> definitely. That was definitely, and that was like seven. That's right. You'll, that you'll point. surpass me because I have a curse. I have a curse, which is everyone who knows me becomes very successful. Except Hell, for me. Yes, we should have had you on earlier. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> um, so you're doing two movies back to back. And now. Now I'm 12 at this who's point. Who is a new manager at like a big company? It's yeah, like, it was. Uh, he passed away, uh, and I'm no longer with that management company, but I was with them from, like, I was, like, 11 to, like, 15. I forget the name of it, but his name was Larry Bresner, and his partner at the company uh, managed Billy Crystal and Robin Williams and a bunch of these big oh, times. Wow. shit. And so I did Nancy Drew. The, the funny thing about Nancy Drew is that Jerry Weintraub, who has since passed away, also, this is another curse, is everyone who, all my connections die. Oh so shit! We're not. We're you're you're going to become really successful and then die. And you're going to die. <laughs> um, I'm not taking his phone number. It's going to be one of you. I called him earlier. He's fucked. <laughs> um, but so so I was on. Uh, Jay Leno wanted me on after watching Greatest Game Ever Played. He was like, "I love this kid. I want to have him on." So I did uh, the Tonight Show. You did the Tonight Show twice. Wow. Uh, How old is this? I was 11 when I did it the first time, and then. 
13. Who were the other guests when you were there? Both Don times. Rickles. What Don the Rickles, fuck? did he roast wow. you? He I, he called me a hockey puck backstage because I was like, I know, I, I was love like, that it wasn't for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I was with my parents, and uh-huh. my dad was like, "Can you call my son a hockey puck?" Oh, and he okay. was like, "You're being a hockey puck, whatever." Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, he was like making Jewish jokes about me. He's all sure. Jewish. Yeah. Um, and he was like, "He was like, Are you bar mitzvah?" And I was like, "Not yet." I don't remember. I was, it was some. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, that was the first time. The second time was The Rock. God wow. damn, it's so cool. Wow. The Rock was promoting Doom. So you both know The Rock. Yes, I do. You met The Rock? He yeah. saw me in a production of Hello, Dolly, um, off, off, off Broadway at the University of Miami, where I went to college. Why was he, was he, he there went to college, college there? there. Yeah, so yeah. he just happened to be there. I auditioned for Young Rock, and I didn't get it. And I knew that because of he went to University of Miami, there which is in the script. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we got into a bit of a Twitter beef. Did uh, you? He, he said something about showering three times a day. Oh, and yeah. And I, like, quote tweeted, not him, just, like, the article being like, this is kind of weird. Uh, something about he, how he was crazy. He said, like, I wake up every morning, I take a cold shower at 5, regular shower at 6.30. Wait, I remember that. That was to you? That was your response to you? I remember when he tweeted that. He tweeted that, and then I tweet, I, like, quote tweeted the article with something. And then then all of a sudden, I noticed a tweet got all these, like, likes and retros of what's going on, and then I saw that he had replied to it. He said, shut up, bitch! And so I was getting, (laughs) it was was actually the kind of getting dragged that I didn't mind, because people were writing me, like, Hey, stinky. When you take hey, a shower, stinky. Filthy, stinky neck. Remember when someone said you had like a stinky neck or and something? I was, I was just like, okay, I'll just sh- I'll just shower. Yeah. I think the rock stands are probably some of the most fun stands. <laughs> yeah, are. but a lot of stinky. You 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 must smell like ass. Mm-hmm. And then like uh, I immediately backpedaled. And I think people, like some people were like, look at this guy backpedaling. But people also were like. Look at this stinky People guy. understood like I had to. That's my only move. Yeah. If I'm fighting the rock, I'm, I'm yeah. getting on my knees. And then I wrote back like, "Hey, uh, Mr. Rock, uh, you saw me in uh, <laughs> Miami." Rock. And then he wrote back, "Is like, oh, you know, my wanna some some term that means brother." And like, "I love you, I love that show. You were so good." And we moved on. Oh yeah. my Thank god! Thank God, wow. amazing. So they're still cool. But I uh, I have met Jay Leno too. Oh yeah, I did not do his show, but I met him at the Green Room in Flappers. A much less <laughs> a much less glamorous. The food cost money. <laughs> but uh, and were you were you good at that too? Like you, oh yeah, you, yeah. you had stories and it, he just I did impressions because I was always doing impressions. Did you do time. him to his face? I to did, his chin? I did. He was like, he was like to his chin. He was like, okay, you do an impression of me, and I wasn't very good at. It. I did that. I was a little kid. I was like, what did you do? A good show. And yeah. I did like because I was watching Family Guy a lot at the time. Uh-huh. There was a Family Guy bit that they made fun of Jay Leno where. Seth MacFarlane just did him going like, so I just did that. And yeah. he was like, oh, it's really funny. Uh, I can't do a good impression of Jay Leno, uh, but it was cute when I was a kid. And I sure. did Cartman. The bar is lower for, for child impression. Yeah, of oh, course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and I did a Cartman impression because, of course, I was watching South Park when of I was course, like 12. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, he and then I forget. I, I have to unearth it and watch it because I don't remember. Then we talked about the movie, and I'm sure I was just being a cute kid. And what two movies you're – Promoting the, the promoting golf greatest one. game ever played, and then I think the other one, the other appearance was to promote both Nancy Drew and License to Wed. Uh huh. Got it. Because they came out, we filmed them back to back. That was back when movies would be filmed and then like like come out exactly a year later. Yeah. Uh huh. Like they would film it in the summer and be like, next summer it's coming out. Sure. So, uh, because you couldn't just like edit it as you were shooting it and release it like two weeks later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that you can do that, but like you can. Uh, so I, he saw, uh, Jerry Weintraub, who was huge, like big time, big time producer. If you looked him up, you'd be like, oh, that guy, he did like all the oceans movies, all the karate kid movies. Uh, there's others. Um, the list goes on and on and on, but he saw me on the tonight show and he was, uh, the producer, executive producer of Nancy Drew, which was supposed to be this big. It ended up we just made the one movie, but it was supposed to maybe be like this big a trilogy or trilogy like thing. thing. Yeah. Um. And uh, he saw me and was like, "Yeah, I want that kid in this movie. We got to rewrite whatever that role is for this kid because he's so funny." So there was a role in the movie that I ended up playing that was re- that was written for like a fifteen year old like skinny awkward kid that he was like just rewrite it for this kid, and mm-hmm. he called me. I got on the phone with him. And he's like this legendary producer. And I'm like, what's up? And he's like, I want you in this movie. You want to do this movie? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, we're rewriting the role for you. I was like, okay. 
So I went and I did the movie, and then I did, uh, while I was doing that, I auditioned for License to Wed and booked that as I was filming Nancy Drew, and I went home for like two weeks to New Jersey, came right back and filmed License to Wed. Wow. So it's all looking good. Yeah, it's yeah, all I'm, looking good. I'm, I'm waiting for the fall. Okay, and then is, the, is Ace Ventura right after that? Ace Ventura, I auditioned for... Well, okay, so the interesting thing about Ace Ventura is that I didn't, I didn't audition for it. It was... They came to me with this premise. They were like, we have this idea. While I was filming License to Wed, they were like, we have this idea for this Ace Ventura um, reboot kind of franchise new thing. And you must have loved Ace Ventura. Oh, my God. We were of the age. Well, I was saying to Russell, because there's a great documentary on Netflix. What is it called? It, oh, the, it, it the was basically about, about like the history of like trans performers throughout movie history, sure, and kind of the 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 rich history or the fact that it's been there forever and the ways it was used, you know, portrayed in this horrible way, uh, and then and then just the ways that there's always been like an interest in in trans people and they've sure. always been a part of the entertainment, but there was this very intense moment where they. Uh, talk about Ace Ventura. Is it two? No, it's the first one. It's the first when he's first one when he like. There's something where he kisses he kisses a woman, and then they find out it's a trans woman essentially. Yeah, and he's like, I kissed a man, and he like vomits and brushes his teeth and with like a, throwing and up puts and, like a plunger, yeah, yeah. and people are throwing up. Yeah, and like, and I remember seeing it as a kid, and you know, just laughing along. Yeah, and they portray it as this moment of especially some of these trans actors like seeing it. As as children or in their teens, yeah, and just like it's so absurd. It's just wild how yeah. how intense it feels. It's just so cruel. Yeah, yeah. But enough uh, enough time had passed because I feel like it was Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura two, kind of like a few years apart, and then it's like. So this is kind of like being the, branded as a reboot. When did, when did Ace Ventura 2 come out? Was it like 97 or It would be funny, yeah. though, if Ace Ventura Jr. had was like an incredibly transphobic movie. <laughs> I didn't notice any of that when we watched it yesterday. No, yes, we yes, really yes, strayed yeah. away there from was, that. There was a yeah. meeting where uh, they were like, there hey, was a scene. There was should a we scene. be? And yeah. I was like, I don't think so. And they were like, all right. Yeah, you stood up for it. You yeah. said, we're going to fix this part. Um, but the, so it's but t- enough time had passed, like over 10 years or 10 yeah, years. Yeah, so about. we shot it in 2006. Okay. Or 2007. It came out in 2000. We either shot it in 06 or 07, came out in 08 or 09. I'm just yeah. kidding. And is it the same? I just want, I wish I could hear the phone call of them calling Jim Carrey and saying, could you just pop in for one scene? <laughs> oh, it was so. Because what's so funny about this this movie is it's implied, uh, we assume he's alive at the end. That he's. He's your dad. He, oh, he's my dad, but that he's. Missing. Missing. Yes. Missing. And the funniest is like your grandfather Basically, like tells you, like you're you're a you're, you're a father. Ventura, yeah. you're a Ventura, and opens like a box where there's like a picture, <laughs> and it's of, of him the holding back you, of him. and it's of the head. back of his like head. That was could the not get. hair and makeup guy. The picture. Oh, but it's just so clear that they did not have permission to show Correct. his face. Not yeah. even his face. Yeah. And I wonder if he got any. I'm sure he got no money. But I just wonder if they said to him, like, if you just let us use your face in this in, picture. In your head, though, as a kid, huge fan of Ace Ventura, this must have been like finding out you're gonna they're gonna reboot Ace Ventura with yeah. you. It as was Ace the Ventura. coolest thing in the world. Yeah. I mean, I I knew immediately. I mean, now remember, I was twelve. Or I was thirteen when we started filming, so I was not a like a baby. Like I was a young. I was I was an adolescent kid that like had. Real thoughts. And I was like, I could see where people won't like this. Like, I could I could uh-huh. see where it would go down wrong. Yeah. Sure. But I was like, but they'll understand that it's a kid's movie. And it's not for them. Yeah. Like, yeah. if I can understand that, they can understand that. Yeah. And... You didn't think two men in their 30s would be watching it in 2022. <laughs> well, it's... I, honestly, it's had this unbelievable resurgence... Uh, in my life, like yeah. in this really positive way, because sure. it was such a negative experience afterwards. Uh, afterwards, was filming it? it was the best experience of my entire yeah. life. I mean, you like, were the lead, lead. I was the lead. I met they, some of my best friends. Yeah, and they had you do. I mean, they exploited every talent you had. Yeah, like it was I, like gag after yeah. gag. After I wrote. Gag. I wrote like half the lines in that movie. They, uh-huh. David Mickey Evans, who was the writer and director, wrote and directed the Sandlot. He yeah. it was fantastic. Yeah. And he is so good with kids. And he would come to me and be like, This line's stupid. What do you think's funny? You're a kid. You should be you this movie's for your friends. What do you think's funny to say here? 
And I'd be like, well, I think if we say it like this, and he'd be like, all right, let's do a take with that. And so I, that's amazing. I yeah. would write so many lines in that movie just because I was having fun. Now, can I ask, because we, we noted it yesterday, that there's a lot of jokes about you being a chubby kid yeah. in that movie. When you were at that age, was there any like, oh, do I have to get stuck in the locker too? Or were you like, yeah, I thought in. it was funny. I thought it was funny, but I definitely had like the deep rooted yeah. Yeah. sadness of sure. like, I don't want to be the fat kid. I want to yeah. be, because like I would do that movie and then I would watch like whatever that, what was that Jonas Brothers show that they had on TV? Was it just called the Jonas Brothers? Oh, or, yeah. or, or Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or whatever. And I'd watch these kids who were my peers and see how the girls would just like fawn over them. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. oh, these are the heartthrobs. And I was like the funny fat kid. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, but I'm funny. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Sure. There just is a difference, like having been that age and uh, chubby. Um, there's a difference of like doing it, like, like, it just feels different when a little kid's doing it than when like an, an adult is doing. It. Do you sure. know what I mean? Like, there's just a, like like this thing where you can't separate fully. Like, like the kid, like as a kid, you're like, because I remember wanting to make those kind of jokes yeah, and stuff, of and course. you do. But then also you're like, uh, like there is something that I don't feel as insecure it's about. Fun. It now, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. I remember very vividly like the feeling of which I think uh, Bo Burnham perfectly had in eighth grade. I don't know if you've seen that movie. I did see it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That feeling of like making a joke, having everybody laugh, like you're at a party, like a pool party or something. And then as soon as you think like everyone's got you, then they like all turn towards this other person who's like the attractive one that they all really want. And then you're left sitting there being like, I just embarrassed myself. Yeah. For this joke. In hopes that this would then get, like, lead to something, you know. Yeah, like some substance. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like, oh, no, they just want me to. Just a quick distraction. Be funny. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I'll keep doing it so long as they keep looking at me. Yeah. And then when you get older, then, you know, if you're the the chubby actor, they're like, well, he's rich. So we will get with him. (laughs) Yeah. But when you're a kid, you don't have that. So So I was neither for a while. And it was just, like, brutal brutal. out there. Okay, so you're, you're in this. You're filming it. You're having a great time. Yeah. You're this star. Um, and you said there's some time it, like between you, you've finished filming and there's some time before it comes out. Yeah. Uh, what's that time like? And then what like what was the response? Like because you have implied that then it came out and there was <laughs> negativity. Negativity. Um, so making it. Yeah. was amazing. But I will say d- during the course of making it. There was never anything that was like worth like it was a good it was a great experience but there were things that uh, we would my mom and I would kind of like peg along the way that was like that's weird where I was led to believe at first when I was doing it that it was this big budget thing that it was potentially okay you were like movie yeah theater deal yeah like I was at that point like though it was I was a child actor whatever like I was starring in movies like movies that were coming out in theaters yeah and I was seeing this as, oh, this is going to be a theatrical release yeah. Yeah. movie. Yeah. Going back, if I knew what I knew what they were going to do with it, would I have done it? I don't know. What, it's such a your, big decision was, to make it Was 12. your first tip but, off the panda? Well, I got... <laughs> I was, I was going to say, was it the T-Rex uh, made of plastic bones? <laughs> no, I felt like the T-Rex was like still like, okay, well, it's the thing. The panda is... The panda is the abhorrent. greatest offender it's, of the There's yeah. a very scary I was panda. Like, I was like, just pick a different... It animal, looks like it was like a rejected a from Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they obscure it with like plants to yeah. like kind yeah. of hide how bad it is. It's very yeah. funny. But that is a funny thing where you're like, yeah, I, I could totally see how you going into that thought. This is getting released in theaters. It was a big They're, family decision. Why wouldn't it? The first two Ace Venturas went to yeah. theaters. Why would they? And they also told us that that's what it was going to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's no reason to like bring up old whatever. Like I, I have a good relationship with everybody that we did the movie with and stuff. But you can, you can do it on here. <laughs> I know. You're saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, it was this big family decision. We, I remember sitting around the kitchen table. Now, why we was were, it big a decision? Just because we of the re- shoot commitment? No, we were reading like the contract. Sure. And there was like this two, three, four picture deal of like 
if in the theaters it makes X amount of money, I'll get X amount in the back end, and then I will be able oh, to pro- like have X amount to in like producing points for the next movie and whatever. So Can it was this like making these decisions at twelve. Well, it wasn't. This it was is, my parents, my, still, my, my sure, lawyer, yeah. my agents, and me. But it all came down to like you want to do this, right? And I yeah. was like, yeah, absolutely. But I was also very much led to believe that it was going to be bigger than it was. Yes. Yeah. And when we showed up and all of a sudden it was this kind of rinky dink operation. Like it seemed you much felt more it right away. Budget. Oh yeah. We showed yeah. up and we were like, you're like, this isn't like the license to wed set. Yeah. You know, you're like, this wasn't what we were told it was yeah. going to be. Um, but it was still an amazing experience. And I was like, I'm going to do this movie. I'm going to be happy doing this movie. And when it gets released in theaters, it's going to be huge. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't getting a theatrical release. And then all of a sudden, we were behind on schedule. And we were having to try to cut costs and this, that. And I was like, this is weird. But still loved doing it. And the experience was super fun. And it was great. Um, Months later, I'm like, when is this coming out in the movies? And all of a sudden, it's not. And that it's going to get this direct-to-DVD release. And I was like... I don't want to do a direct to DVD movie. I'm a yeah. movie star. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yeah. But I, I were your were your ma- was your manager pissed? Were they like, listen, man, they're they're fuck they're fucking us. I'll be honest, I don't remember, uh-huh. and I haven't spoken to them. I, mean, I still have the same agents, and my manager that manager has passed away, and I'm with a new managerial company, so I don't. Was I don't this know. The movie that did it <laughs> killed him. No, uh, but I'm still with the same agents. I guess I get sit down with them one day. I've been with the same agents since I was four, so I wow. get sit down with them one day and get some of the details. But I've never really thought about asking just because I yeah. don't remember, and it's this thing in the past. And but uh, yeah, then all of a sudden we found out that it was going to be released on Cartoon Network as this like big movie premiere. Like they were marketing okay. it, and I was okay. like, oh, that's cool. I love Cartoon sure. Network. I love Ed Ed and Ed Ed Nettie. I love. All these, sh- I'm trying to remember what else was on then. Um, uh, Courage the Cowardly Courage, Dog. Courage, yes. Powder Puff Girls. Yeah. It was a cool time. Yeah. So I was like, hell yeah. It's going to be released in 2008 or 2009 on on uh, Cartoon Network. And I made a Twitter. I made a Twitter account in 2009. In 2008 or 9. 2008 wow. or 9. And I posted this video that I made uh, on my MacBook, like, in photo booth. And I was like, hey, guys, it's Josh Flitter, star of Ace Ventura Jr. It's going to be, want to let you know it's premiering on whatever. And then all of a sudden, it was like, what is this? What is this movie? You're a piece of shit. Why would you make this movie? Like, you're ruining the franchise. And I was like, oh, no. What the fuck? You know, I was a 13-year-old, 14-year-old kid. I was like, this is weird. Oh, my God. The movie comes out. What was the worst thing someone said? Is it still online? There are... If Is they that tweet exist, still there, you think? No. I've also deleted everything that I've tweeted pre-2018. Because I was a 13-year-old kid with Sure, Twitter, sure. Yeah. And don't need, I don't need any of that smoke. Because I'm sure I tweeted jokes that aren't funny. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. As a 13-year-old kid. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. You're like, my favorite scene in Ace Ventura <laughs> yeah. is the scene where he kisses the, <laughs> the transphobic scene. <laughs> um, so, I don't remember... Uh, but you were but hurt. You were like, what's going on? It was Can more you of imagine like imagine putting confused. out as a child, I'm just so excited, uh, Ace Ventura, blah, 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 and then adults, grown adults, because it's probably Ace Ventura fans who, when it came out in the early 90s, now oh, yeah, these weren't kids. are like 25, 30 years old, and they're like, fuck, fuck you, 13-year-old kid, living his dream. You're ruining the legacy of Ace Ventura. Ventura. So let me, I'll, I'll bring up something, I'll expose this guy, because oh, uh, please, uh, he Wilson. exists. There's a guy who... I, I still am not totally, totally sure if this person is who I think it is. But at the time, there was a Twitter account that popped up that when I made my Twitter, it was Josh underscore Flitter because someone had already taken Josh Flitter. And I was like, that's weird. Um, hold on, let me see. Yep, it still exists. And uh, I was, here, here are some of the tweets. Uh the first tweet was August 26th. We're coming up in the anniversary. August 26th, 2010. Just shot an ad for Krispy Kremes. Got a free box to hashtag birthday girl. Then they tweeted, another day, another fat joke. Hurry, I need some friends quick. My imaginary friends are turning on me. Attention all. I'm the real Josh Flitter. Josh underscore Flitter is an imposter and a poser. Shrek 4 was a career highlight. I got to meet all the stars like, um, oh dear, 
what uh what do you do what do you mean justin bieber is hot i'm the child sex bomb uh just all this weird like i was a 13 year old kid and, and this person was this account was made this account i had reason to believe that it was a host of a podcast uh radio show in new zealand because i saw they were doing episodes where they were making fun of the movie and one of them was like talking about it and this was all at the time I was doing like my own investigative research. You were a an investigator, <laughs> a detective, a detective. Oh, okay, so that's just, a deep just, cut for anyone just, who saw oh the movie. My, that's a brilliant. Just, just that's so a brilliant who callback. Has not seen Ace Ventura Junior. Um, a, a huge well, a plot huge point of the movie. Plot, plot point is that <laughs> the word detective doesn't get revealed. Until, Correct. So it's like a, I forgot about that until you just said that. That's Ace true. Ventura pet. <laughs> Investigator? Investigator, searcher for and then, lost and animals. Then the grandpa the end, says the grandpa it right. Like detective. He's like, "You're a and detective," like, and I'm like, and like "Oh!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this adult male recreates this Twitter, just thing, making and fun like of me, making fun of you. So nonstop. then I started being like, "Hey guys, hey guys, this is not me. This is an imposter." So then this guy is starts it? tweeting, uh, uh. Just saw Cars 2. Fuck. What did I ever do wrong? Hashtag Space Buddies. Hashtag Shrek 4. Uh, it's for kids, Wait, but it's good. what's the joke about Shrek 4 that you... I don't know. I don't fucking know. I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, they might have been doing this on the podcast. Sure. Um, I didn't know there were podcasts in 2009. There yeah. were, Remember when Apple had like podcasts and it was just like an app on your phone and no one ever listened to them? Uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. I think it was... Okay. Pretty okay. serial. It was uh -huh. there. Uh, but could you imagine 2011? So this is I would have been. I was born in. You guys want to help me with the math here? I was born in 94. 94 to 2011. 17. Wait. 15. 15. Yeah. Yeah. I oh. was 15. And this guy's tweeting, masturbating. Oh baby, pretending he's a 15 year old kid. Oh That's my god. That's some shit you would god. do. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. my, oh my god. But like, god. it's just it was weird. It was objectively weird. And How many? Are, are, is it getting a big response or like no? One's uh, really following they that? no, no one's really following it. Uh, I don't. But know, it's that's, a weird thing for you to be like, who? Why is this person doing this? Yeah, thing and I, and kid? and that's where I started being like, that's weird. I thought people liked me. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. and then I would go on IMDb message boards. Oh no! Oh Josh. Boy. No, don't do that. Josh. I think they've since gotten rid of them because they were too toxic. What would were they really going after you or oh, like yeah. who else? It was are like there, this are there fat fucking cunt doing this movie. This piece of shit little fuckface ruined the franchise. And I'm like a 14-year-old in my room like reading this like Oh, they're talking about me. Oh, I'm ruining their favorite movie. Oh my god. Yeah. I can't Who's I going? cannot connect to people who are like, you've ruined this thing with a TV movie. Just go watch the movie you like. It's weird. It's I don't weird. understand what, what happens to guys. But my favorite, it's guys. my favorite thing yeah, it's guys. is that I have taken the power back now. I have it. It's my movie now. Like now. And I make fun of it so much. And I'm so proud of the silliness of it. And I've gotten this success on Twitter there's a little bit of success, but through first doing impressions and stuff, and then these people followed me and were like, oh, my God, you're the kid from Nancy Drew and License to Wed and Ace Ventura, and now I post all the shit making fun of the movie, and I get all the praise. Yeah. Uh-huh. And all now these you people- you call yourself a fat fucking cunt. And I call yeah. myself- I was a fat fucking cunt. How about that? Huh? Um. So, but, so that comes out, and then is there a period where you're like, where you had this like thing where all of a sudden we were doing- License by Nancy Drew, Ace Ventura, but then, it, like, it, you you kind of alluded to there was a time period where you're like, oh, then these things aren't regularly it happening. It stopped. Yeah, because of Ace because Ventura. Because of Ace Ventura. No, 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 no. Oh. no. Just because you're the older. Of it. Yes. You're older. Yes. Like there is a thing with with in I feel like for kids where it's like, where they get to a certain age where we're pulling. Well, they're not adults yet, but we don't know what to do with them. Like, you're like, if you're not going to be a Jonas brother, right? you know, Yep. like they're sure. uh, in a high school kind of thing. There's one thing to do, and I may and have Jonah totally... Jonah Hill was doing it at the time, or he's a little older than you. Yeah, older. Yeah. No, there's one thing to do, and I may have totally jeopardized my career by not doing it. I told my agency managers I will not audition for or act in a Disney or Nickelodeon TV show. Oh. And and what was your thinking at the time? I said, I am an star. actor who does movies. 
I will not do some bullshit garbage on Disney sure. Channel. I was like, I won't do the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody where I play the fat, funny friend. I won't do uh, you know, any of these shows. Like, I won't. There was a time period where I pitched a show. I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it on my terms. And me and another person, another child actor, who I will not name, uh, pitched a TV show to Nickelodeon. And we almost got it on the air. Mm. And it would have been life-changing because it would have been... It was right after Drake and Josh and right before, like, iCarly. And it was this period of time where they didn't have, like, a buddy-buddy comedy. Sure. Mm-hmm. And we had pitched this idea for the show. And due to insane circumstances about this person, their family, and a big fight that happened, we never got the show on the air. And we were very close. Talk about two child stars, Drake and Josh, that went different different, different routes. Yeah, different you know routes. about that, right? One of them, something bad. Something with a, <laughs> something with a fifteen year old. Yeah, and like the video of him confessing. Are there good? The are there good? Is the other one. Then the other one like things? got fit and is like a movie star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he, he he was the he was like the chubby jokey one. Yeah. Okay. And now he's like fit. Oh, the handsome one is the is the bad one. Yeah. Okay. Which now is, the other one's the handsome one. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So so okay so around this time, is it is it related? I mean, you said the Nickelodeon thing. Is it also related to like? Did you start looking like super different? Like, I mean, this is around puberty. Yeah, but I didn't. I just got like, f- like fatter <laughs> and like worse looking uh, uh, for like as a child. Like, yeah. I I did not grow into myself as an adult now until I was like twenty two. So I did. Anyone say to you like, here's here's a hostess cupcake, but just so you know, <laughs> don't eat. You're it. making a decision. I had a problem with with food and with eating, but I also—I mean, of course, you could be the chubby. I'm just saying, like, yeah. how do you talk to? It, it, I think it's the same problem with like anyone in any part of the business. Yeah, where if someone's like changing in a way where you're like, how do you talk to? So it's just a toxic business. It's really because toxic. It's, yeah. it's impossible to talk to someone whether they need to gain weight or lose oh, weight I knew, or, I or knew. fix their nose or do anything if you know the truth. Yeah, that oh, like I remember my grandfather was a true story. Some agent approached him. And said, I want to sign you, but you have to get a nose job. Yeah. And it's like, that's a terrible thing to say. But the agent might have also been correct at that time in right. the industry. Right. Yeah. And so, like, to say it to 16, it's just like, well, you might as well not say anything my, to a kid. My agents, to their credit, to everyone, no one ever told me you you need to do this. Like, uh-huh. you need to lose the weight. Cause, or you need to gain more. Right, right, right. Well, no, there was, there was, I had that thought where I was like, I guess I have to be, like, the really fat kid. That's just like there for specifically to like eat a cake and fall over. Mm. And remember Hook, the movie Hook, the Roly Poly kid. I mean, dude, to think about it, the yeah. fucking what's the kid? Uh, the Truffle Shuffle. Oh, Chunk. Uh, He's literally there to be fat. Yeah. yeah. And like that's yeah. the joke. And like you know that at the time because it was like the '80s, the director was probably like, "That's yeah, that's funny, but like be fatter. Yeah, be like fatter. Be, do something, jiggle more." Yeah, 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 yeah. And the kid's like, okay, you know. So as as things start drying up, how's your mental state? Is, I mean, is this bad? A, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's bad. It's uh, I I just became. It wasn't bad. It, I didn't know it was becoming bad. I was like in denial. I was like, oh, I'll just start working. I, I'm just in this awkward phase, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm in an awkward phase. I'm not. Uh, an adult yet. I'm not a kid anymore. Everyone, you know, the only people that work through this are like the Jonas Brothers. Yeah. And I know I'm not that. So I'll start working again when I'm like 17, 18. I'll mm-hmm. get all like the, like the super bad movies. Because yeah. at that time, that was like my favorite movie in the world. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll just be the like the Jonah Hill or the Michael Cera or whatever in those movies when I get to that age. And so I went all through high school being a former child actor that really wasn't working anymore. And I did a movie when I was 14 called Snowmen that was like this really indie, low-budget movie, and it was really sweet, but it didn't really go anywhere. And then I was 15, 16, 17, 18, and I just didn't work. And I auditioned a ton, but didn't book anything. There was one point where I auditioned for, uh, where I thought it was all going to change. I auditioned for J.J. Abrams for Super 8. 
Uh huh. Oh. And uh, they ended up casting whoever else to play that role. Um, and I really thought I was like, oh, I'm going to get this. This is going to be my career's back. I was like 16. And are you feeling anxiety? Like, how do you describe like this? The feeling of not booking or like. It's terrible being so big, being on the Tonight Show. Yeah, yeah. I and had the, then, in my my room in New Jersey. My door in my this town in New Jersey had like this welcome Josh Flutter to the Tonight Show. Like I took it off the door there and I put it on my door in New Jersey. And yeah. now I'm coming home from school, doing math homework, and walking in my room, and it says the Tonight Show featuring yeah, with Josh Flutter. And I'm going in my room, and I'm like, every audition became the biggest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah I was like, yeah. I need to book this, and then I wasn't. And it would just kind of make it worse and worse and worse. That and bizarre thing, too, from going from I'm on a movie set. They're like, we're going to offer you Ace Ventura. You don't have to audition, you know, or yeah. we're rewriting this part for you, kid. Like it. That's such a mind like thing of like then being like, I have to work so hard at this audition and yep. put all your eggs in that basket. It's yep. just like a crazy turnaround for a kid, especially. Oh, yeah. It's, it's hard enough as an adult when those kind of things happen. But like as a kid. And I had it easy. Yeah. I had it easy compared to so many kids that I know that. Are not in a good... I mean, Shia LaBeouf. He is the way he is because he's a product of the system of child actors. Like, in a negative way. And how so? Because he's had so much success. Like, which had, way is it negative? He had... Uh, uh, you can't give a kid that much power. I mean, you look at, uh, at Justin Bieber, who now has seemingly come out on the other side and seems like a pretty good kid. But, I mean, remember when he was, like, pissing in buckets and, like whipping his uh, Ferrari around at like two in the morning and everyone's like fuck this kid dude he's 17 years old and you're giving him all the fame and money in the world yeah you would do the same fucking thing you know you would yeah yeah, like you're whipping a car around no one's watching you you're getting in an accident you know I wouldn't do the pissing in buckets I could see like (laughs) I could see a video of me at 15 if I had been that successful like being really rude to a waiter Mm -hmm. yeah without hindsight without learning but you don't know until you're there yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And and I I gained uh, just recently just kind of a new respect for like I I feel for these kids that are on Stranger Things. I really hope that they're all going to be okay. But statistically, one of them won't be. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's just yeah. like to be given that much. Because one of the things that uh, I never had that these kids now have is social media. I know. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. When I was that age and I did all these movies, Instagram was just starting. Twitter was just starting. Now you're on a TV show. You get a million followers in a week. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden you have, you could say anything or post anything. And once you post it, it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's there and people see it. And... Whether that means you're a kid and you think, oh, I can slide into this person's DMs. Sure. And then someone else sees it and posts it on Twitter. Uh-huh. You know, it uh-huh. happened recently. with I don't know if you saw the whole, like, Doja Cat. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Noah yeah. Schnapp thing. Doja Cat asked someone, can you introduce me? One of the kids to- on the show, if he could introduce her to another, one of the other actors in the show. They're all adults. Um, but then he thought it was funny and, like, posted about it. And yeah. then she was like, what the fuck are you doing? I asked you to do that, like, privately. Yeah. But this is just normal to them. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Like, that's a normal, like, I would do that to a friend. Be like, yo, look at this. My friend said this to you. But, like, I know not to post that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. I didn't grow up with Twitter from the age of, like, 11 years old. Yeah. But just when the kids, there was a kid from Stranger Things, the curly-haired kid. They announced, like, a Netflix show where he was going to, like, punk prank show on blue collar workers or something <laughs> it was something where people were like what the fuck yeah. and i'm like i'm like his involvement in that idea was minimal yeah. right. he's being dragged and even that. if it was maximum even if he was maximum, like i have this idea yeah. he's a kid he's a fucking he's, he's like 17 it, yeah. or 18 he's like what if we give homeless people money but it like it, it disintegrates and they're like oh we have <laughs> netflix is like we have billions of dollars and we're not going to tell this kid no because he yeah, has yeah, billions yeah. of followers. So it's like, yeah, Gaten, do whatever the fuck you want. That's funny. Let's prank a homeless guy. Yeah. Like, do you think like you could talk to parents of child star? I mean, it seems like you have a good relationship with your parents. I do. I had a manager, my first manager. Uh, they represent a lot of kid actors, including one of the kids from Stranger Things. Now that you make me remember it. And then, like, they, they all got older, and so they became a, an adult management company. Yeah. But I heard a couple stories from them, and it just sounded like it was so much about the parents. Yeah. It was like, were the parents cool? Yeah. 
And they're really, they're so much a part of the conversation. I think a big part of why I worked a lot when I did as a kid was because of my mom and both my parents, but my mom traveled with me and like we would, she and I would see other moms and kids and like make fun of them like to ourselves. Yeah. 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 Like we would bond over like how fucking weird is this? kid's mom yeah like these stage moms i bet yeah yeah and then was there a period like because you you work now and you do you do voiceover and you act like was there i'm still not i mean i wish i was like working working (laughs) well that's where i think that's what seems like the scariest to me is like you know what that level of success is i always you know when you're not in the conversation at all i always made this joke uh, as a, as a kid or as like a young adult, where I would say to other kids, it'd be like, "Is fame like everything it's made out to be? Like, is it amazing?" I'm like, "Yeah, uh-huh. it is. It's like when you're a kid and you're like, what's in the teacher's lounge?' You know, and you're like, "I want to go in there." I went in there. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. And then they kicked me out. Yeah, and now I want to go back in. And it's that kind of thing. That's like the fame and success. Is it amazing? Yeah. Like anyone who says it's not, either they're not cut out for it or they're lying to sound humble. Yeah. Like it's objectively awesome. I went to uh, the Horton Hears a Who premiere because I was in Horton Hears a Who. Uh, and and Oakley made me a pair of sunglasses because I told them that I liked them. I was like, I like Oakley sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. They made me a pair of sunglasses with whatever colors that I wanted yeah. and whatever. And it was the coolest fucking thing in the world. Yeah. Like I went on Jimmy Kimmel. And he gave me an iPod because he was like, I think you'll like this. <laughs> it is it is so obscene. It's so obscene, especially the free shit is so ob- insane. It's idiotic. It's so stupid. Uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf gave me an Xbox because he was like, I know you wanted one, so here it is. Like, yeah, it, it's it's just like when you get to that level, it's just a, a love fest of. And you think you're still chasing things. that, or do oh, you think yeah, like- 100 million percent. <laughs> Yeah. Not because I don't love doing it. I'm doing it because I love to do it and I want to do it and I want to make people laugh and I want to it's like I feel like I'm coming across like such a jackass. No, but no, it makes sense. I think like I was really stoned in LA and I was texting Tove about where like you know, I had a burst of like just, just a little bit of, of new success with stand up. Right. And meetings and, and I, I know well enough meetings don't blah blah blah. But it was just a moment of just being like it's a surreal life. Like it, it's it's surreal to have, you know, even just a couple fans. It's like weird. The relationship is weird, and you're like, yeah. if you had a lot of these, or if you get recognized on the street, it's uncomfortable. Or you it's get, like, you got to be normal. Yeah, it's the only way. And so there's a degree of look. I'm obviously pursuing fully trying to be very successful. Yeah, but there's also a degree where I'm like, oh, I bet it does suck to be Beyonce. I agree, and I wouldn't want to be. I don't want to be that famous. I think when I was a kid. I had a warped idea of it. And that's why I look back now at the all this time that I haven't worked as this weird kind of like, okay, there's uh, it's a blessing. Like, there's silver linings to it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I really could have been a shithead. Yeah. Um, would you because, have been a Justin Bieber type shithead? Like, what would have no. been your thing? See, I, I feel like, though, I'm just going to – I would say a Beyonce is better than probably another one down because she's so famous that she doesn't have to do interviews. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like true. there is something about I think she stopped about, doing like, interviews cuz she was so sick of Yeah, but I mean like there's like a the level questions. of like almost like when you become that famous you can yeah. exclude yourself from Yeah, but especially especially society. as a stand-up comedian <laughs> I'm like that level of fame. There's no way you're still going to be good because your life is now yeah so insane. Well, what do you think about someone like uh, like John Mulaney? Who I mean, I don't know if you Larry know him David or finds a way to like still make things. Yeah, you know. he still makes things, but like there's there's some degree of separation. I'm, I mean, who knows? John Mulaney is still an incredible comedian, right? And I think he's like found a solution to it. But I'm sure there's other parts of his life that like. Just don't hit the same. Yeah, or he's just like he's difficult to be with. If you're, I, I think all the time, especially in this business, people uh, different levels of money, extreme levels of money. Comedians I know who like I love who might never have money, and yeah. it's like you know it changes. P- and sometimes people with money pretend like it doesn't change yeah. like who they are. They're they're like at dinner and they're like, "Why well, could buy this restaurant?" <laughs> but that doesn't change. I think the this perfect is like it does it does. <laughs> I think the perfect career to model after, at least for me, what I want is someone like Ben Schwartz. 
Uh-huh. I think Ben Schwartz, I obviously don't know if you ever have worked with him or know him or anything, but having just viewed him as someone that I look up to, I think he is like, does celebrity right. He's just famous enough that people know him and love him and want to be around him. And from every experience I've ever seen or known about him, he's a genuine yeah. sweetheart to the fans and to the people that he works with. That's all that I've heard. And, and that's something that I would like to model myself in that way. Like I just What level of fame would you want to be at? Mm. Like who's someone you're like, that's it? That's a good question. For um, me, it would be no more than Brad Pitt. <laughs> like I think that's oh one of the no, most famous I, actors of no, all time. I feel like <laughs> I feel like right now, like Sam Richardson's a good, like Sam Richardson is in everything, but like uh-huh. not like if you say the name, people aren't like who, like you know what I mean? Like sure. people are like, but people would still, you know what I mean? Like he he works consistently. He's so funny, and uh, it's not though like a level of like whoa, whoa you know what I mean? Yeah, like where I feel like where John Mulaney things. was like yeah. before was perfect now it seems like insane well you get to a point where you're so famous that people hate you because you're that famous sure yeah. like i just want to be able to do it's shows like, it's like that you are sold out. become like a caricature or there's a little bit of a thing of like you know like your brand you know doesn't that make sense like you're like you're, you're just disappointing people every yeah. everything you that's do that's where with with someone like ben schwartz or like h john benjamin or something like that oh yeah these are guys that like when people recognize them it's because they really appreciate their work. Yeah. When you see Jim Carrey walking down the street, you're like, uh, the average person's like, I need to get a picture with yeah. Jim Carrey because he's Jim Carrey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Oh, Amy saying. Sedaris is a good example, too. Sure. Like someone where you're like, you have like this cult kind of iconic yeah. thing. And you're but working. Also you can just go and she can live her life in yes. the city and not get. You know. Yes. Now you're in an elevator with Jim Carrey somehow. Yeah. And you're going up real high. There's a lot of time. Yeah. Are you going to you going to mention it? I'm mentioning has I've done three things with him, oh, well three have, three oh, projects, two that he's been in and one that he's associated with. He wasn't in Ace Ventura, but I was in Eternal Sunshine uh-huh. and I worked with him, and I was in Horton Here's a Who, and he was Horton and I was the Baby Kangaroo. Oh, so you have met him? Yeah, and you times. talked about Ace. Ventura. Have you seen him since Ace Ventura? So, uh, no. no, Eternal Sunshine was oh. before Ace oh, Ventura. Right, right, right. Uh, and then Horton Here's a Who, we met at the the premiere. And I had just told him that I was doing it, and he was like, "Hey, that's really great." Like it was, it was just that kind of thing. Like yeah, he didn't. He didn't th- go la who. Yeah, and za- za- her. No, <laughs> he was very, he was very kind about it, and it was just a very quick interaction. We were both in the movie, and as I mean, I, you guys know, like with movies like that, you don't meet when you're no, yeah, yeah. You're just recording it separately in booths all over the country, wherever you are. Yeah, and then you meet at the premiere. Um, I'd love you if you had like met with Jim Carrey to like ask him about like what's what's Ace. Listen, Jim, I, got, I gotta know, Jim. You gotta tell me. Because <laughs> I remember he said for Ace Ventura he was imitating a cockatoo. Oh, and he like brought this energy on set. I mean, such a bold move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would be funny if they had made you had done like the junior version of like all of his like Mask Junior. Mask Junior. Well, they like, made Son of the Mask and then they made Dumb and Dumber. So yeah. there was this sure. thing about he like... He did Dumb and Dumber. That's when he needed to do it. He was oh, in. sorry, no. No, there no was, they did, no, they they did, did Dumb and Dumber 2. Yeah, they did. Uh-huh. They did Dumb and Dumber when Harry met Lloyd or Later whatever. On. Yeah. Yes, which Boy. was... Shia LaBeouf was in that. He wasn't one of the leads, but the two leads were... Uh, I forget who, and Eric Christian Olsen, I think, was one of them. And he was in License to Wed. I have. It's so funny how like the connections are like. Yeah, that's so wild. Everywhere, like little like. The ma- and the mask, the mask one was with Jamie Kennedy. Jamie Kennedy, and yeah. that was oh. that. We should have Jamie Kennedy. We should have everyone who's in the sequel of Jim Carrey movies. Yeah. Where are they now? <laughs> um, all right, well, let's go to yes. uh, our our next time. Let's make this quick. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Oh. Do you have a thing? It can be related to child acting. Could be related to acting. Related to nothing at all. It's related to nothing at all because I thought about it before I came. Then okay. tell me. Uh, I'm really, it's gotta stop. People that say that their cats are like dogs, they're like, my cat's really cool because it's like a dog. Just get a fucking dog. Mm. Or just like be proud of the fact that your cat's a cat. I don't want your, because I'll go to people's places. I don't like cats. I'm not a big cat guy. I'm allergic. Allergic, sure. I don't dislike cats. I'm like, they're fine. I dislike cats, the claws. I was scratched when I was a little kid by my stepfather's cat. God, you're so... And shut the fuck up. And... Uh, but I was with a cat recently that, that didn't scratch, and I did like it. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. 
they're fine animals. I don't wish death upon them. Like they're fine. And, and all my friends who have cats, I'm like, that's cute. But when they're like, I'm like, I don't really like cats. You go, no, no, no. My cat's different. It's like a dog. Mm, now, okay, as someone with a cat and a dog, mm-hmm. what's your take on this? I think they're very different, and I think uh, I think that there's an insecurity people who have cats have. Uh, because of society, and I think that what was I this think an oppressed group? <laughs> listen, I'm just saying. I, we've talked about this before. I think the hatred of cats is l- linked to misogyny. We've Whoa, talked about are you this called, Hold on, <laughs> hold no, on. No, 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 no. No, I'm saying like people are allergic, and I'm not saying. I think I agree with you in your thing of like I think people feel insecure yeah. about o- being a cat owner. So th- to make it them feel better, they say it's like a dog. I yeah. don't think we need to do that. I'd say like cats are great, dogs are great. They're very different things. They're not the same. Correct. Not, they can um, be equally great though. Why not? They can be great in different right. ways. They're not the same thing. They're very different. I, I'm, an e- I'm an evil vet, and I have, I'm have. i going to put down one of your animals. No. Which Why one? Why would you do that? Why Which one? The dog that? or the cat? Why would you do that? Which one? The dog or the cat? I'm gonna, I'll kill the vet with my bare hands. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I'll kill you. Um, listen, no. I just think that they're, they're very different things. They do different things. They check off different boxes for people. Like, your cat isn't something that, like... One will love you, will show you affection, will care about you, and the other one's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I think <laughs> uh, um, I I like them for different reasons, and I think it's just an insecurity people who have, who have cats have, and I don't think they need to do it. Like just own that. Yeah, you have just a say fucking it's cat. a cat, and it's I love cat. my cat. It's and one I of like those cats. things you never hear the other. You know the same. It was like an old hack bit where they'd be like, uh, "Tofurkey, it tastes like turkey." No one ever is like, "Give me a give me turkey that tastes like tofu." Like it was basically <laughs> saying that yeah. no one really likes this thing. It's yeah. it feels like that because no one's like, "No, my dog's my dog's just like a cat." Yeah, no but, one ever. But people, people, I know plenty of people who have cats that would never have a dog. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, do yeah, they yeah. ever say that cats are way like cats easier like a dog. to take care of? That's, that's why the thing is like that's that's that is my point. Is yeah. that people like I understand all the reasons to have a cat. I get it. If I wasn't allergic, I might get a fucking cat. Yeah. But it's when people are like, "No, you would like my cat. He's just like a dog." And I'm like, "Don't do that." Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. This got to stop. That's a good yeah. one. Let's go to our final segment. You better count your blessings. You better count your blessing. Russell, you got a blessing for us. Yes. It's a little premature, um, but um, our friend, Chris Cafaro, uh, Uncle Function member, he is moving to L.A. and he's leaving New York. And um, I am very, I'm sad about it, and um, but I'm excited for him. And uh, I just feel like um, we, we we don't know what that means for Uncle Function and his role in the future. But I'm just uh, thankful for our friend Chris, and um, I you know I'm excited for him and his new move. So your blessing is that he's leaving. No, um, <laughs> that's why I started laughing because I thought at the beginning of it I was like, uh, "Are you gonna do no, this whole bit about the him?" No, the blessing is uh, him. He's uh, we I've been lucky to have him for all these years in New York and Uncle Function, and I'm gonna miss him terribly. But you know, um, well then, let me add the semi blessing of of it was it was very cool to see this live podcast podcast with fans because I think it it kind of is a sign that uh, we're growing and hopefully we can go to L A. Yeah, and. Uh, and maybe even pay for for flights and, yeah. and do stuff out there and yeah. become a little yeah I'm open to it by coastal boys well yeah let's yeah. Uh, yeah. everybody the wants that's the goal is that's really the goal good. is to be by coastal yeah. that's how you know you're successful you know what we were talking about success before I want to be successful enough to be by coastal that's it I feel like I've known so many people now who like are like I'm by coastal now and then after like four flights are like I'm I go to New York twice a year. And My home base is L.A., but I go to New York. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, but it, it, it would be fun. Um, uh, my blessing is, is again, it's the, that show, and I'm uh, about to be late to uh, dinner with my step, my former stepfather, oh? technically speaking. Wow. Technically speaking. But uh, I, you, we had a very contentious growing up. Mm. He was, uh, I, I consider him the antagonist of my childhood. Like so you're going to this dinner for is he comedic come value? See show or? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he's just here briefly to he's, fight you. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just yeah. to buy you dinner. <laughs> just to buy me dinner. Though let me tell you, I was in L.A. This is my blessing. My sisters, if they were on this, 
I feel like we've I've reached a point with my younger sisters where if we go out, I'm now paying for the meal. Mm, it's and, just ten dollar tickets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're they're taking advantage. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to the smoothie place and they have it, the marketing works so well on suckers like me. It's called like the millionaire smoothie. And it's like a twenty dollar smoothie with twenty different things in it. And I'm like what And there's the something hell? called the billionaire smoothie that's forty dollars and I You're will not there get it yet. someday. You're I'm not, not there, there yet. yet. But I got it. I and then the fact that my sister was like, She got it too. She got the same smoothie. I was like, sweetheart. I it's funny. Your sister's you blessing that. is that you have the money to pay for dinner, too. Where's, where's the George Washington smoothie? <laughs> the, just milk in a cup. Yeah. <laughs> One strawberry. Uh, do you have a blessing? I thought these were supposed to be silly. Oh, that's they, fine. <laughs> that's fine. They, they can be. We're, we're in a sincere Please. mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, mine were uh, uh, single person bathrooms and restaurants. Love it. I love because that. I have irritable bowel syndrome and it's bad. I got yeah. bad IBS. I got it like where it's Can not. You say it's when bad you say like it's like disease because you you. Uh, it's it. bad. Um, <laughs> I have when irritable you say it's bowel. Bad, do you mean it just happens a lot or it's yeah, loud? Yeah, I gotta poop like eight oh. times a day. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do the rest of it as disease? Yeah. Um, so I gotta poop all the time. And is it is it loud <laughs> per Russell's question? I don't know why, but well, uh, he said it was bad. I was like, I don't know if that means it's it not just loud. It's a lot. quiet. No, <laughs> um, no. I, I have to. I've used the restroom a lot. It runs in my family. Uh, we have it stomach literally problems. Literally runs. <laughs> yeah. We have stomach problems in my family, and I think it is such a small effort that restaurants and bars can make to just have like a nice bathroom because it's so frequent that you walk into a place and you're like. You're at a bar. Everyone's drinking. Everyone's eating terrible food. People got a fucking shit. So they go into the bathroom and you have these like terrible, yeah. like one piece of plywood that's just like the the space between it and the thing is like this big. People can like fit their whole fist <clears throat> in there. It's so easy to just like build a couple single person bathrooms that have a lock on the door. Yeah. Lock on the and door. every time I go into a bar and I'm on a date and I'm like nervous and my stomach's bothering me, I'm like, I got to go pee. And I really have to go just fucking shit. Yeah. I go into the bathroom and there's a one person bathroom and I lock that door and it's just me and I feel so at ease. Uh, I'll never forget. Yeah. And I'll I'm never really forget. thankful one for One time I was, I had a friend set me up with one of their friends and it was at like a bar and everyone's there and I just had to poop so bad. One bathroom like that's open for everyone. Two two like toilets right next to each other and there's a giant line for this in this nightmare pack pack bar nightmare wait and i'm like i'm sweating you know when you're like i ha i just and then i had to like step away i'm like i'm so sorry i really have to go to the bathroom i'm waiting this line and i'm the whole time i'm thinking i'm about to blow this shit up yeah the bathroom is open like it's like open open you're gonna be people are waiting so you just they just know you're pooping like you just have to accept that this whole line of people are, are gonna hear me poop, know that I'm pooping. So I get in there and there's no lock. And again, huge holes in the thing. I had to poop like, oh, like the worst. with putting the my worst. foot on the door to make sure no one come, comes in because everyone's really drunk and like, you know, they're not gonna be respectful or, you know. It was just was awful because then you go back and you're like, hopefully she was in the line too because it was just like there's no every at least five six people behind me they all knew what, what was happening there yeah you know, pooping and I've talked about on the story the data went on where I had to poop and we were we had left the restaurant yeah so we just went door to door begging people if I could use their bathroom <laughs> did you tell did you tell there your was date? there was no there was no choice yeah but to tell I have a story for you that is way too long that I'm not gonna tell you here but I could tell you at some point yeah. or after that's yeah, yeah, yeah. disgusting this to do with the date that we, we went into a bar and she had bought a shot so I could use poop and the men's was like okay, it was one of those you went in the, and it was like a mountain of wet toilet paper so I then had to go in the women's restroom yep and it was just she knew how long. Yeah, it was. Brutal. Listen, and we need pooper. to destigmatize the, the 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 embarrassment of shit. Like everyone's got to do it, and some people have to do it. It's very good. I, it's I don't mind talking about it. I, it's like the thing of like I I do still have a stigma of like people hearing it. I will turn on the shower. Yep, yeah. I will turn on the shower. Oh, I'll do everything I can to to make it. Worse, I was at I was at a friend's house in second grade, and I would always want to hang out with this guy. His name was William Worthy. And some, I suddenly had to go to the bathroom and like I went in the toilet and I'm young and I was constipated, I guess. I felt like I had to go. Yeah, sure. And, like if I had the feeling now, if I recall correctly, I would just go about my day and I'd be yeah. like, oh, something. But I just, <laughs> I just sat on the toilet. Yeah. For until the end of the play date. Yeah. And like, it was just like gradually like 30 minutes in. It's like, okay, I, well, I, we're I, not going to play the board game. 
And then he's just like waiting out there. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I must have just stayed in the bathroom the whole play date. And finally they called my parents like, maybe you should pick him up. <laughs> and I never shit oh, the whole God. time. And I can't even, and I never hung out with him again. Yeah. And I can't imagine. I should. I William should find tell you in college, like I one time went, went away with people I didn't know on like some conference thing, and the bathroom was super echoey in the hotel. Oh no! Like you know, like you know when you get in there, you're like it's like it's like it's so echoey. This is I can't. Believe. So I, w- I was like I have to poop and like ever and I was like one of those things where you're like come on well maybe you guys everyone like but there was like two other people in the room and also they weren't watching TV so I was like I was like want to put the TV on like no we're gonna read and I was Dude. like come no. on no so, we're gonna read so I was like we're I gonna meditate there. do you know what I did I was so nervous about the bull farts because I was like it's so echoey in here <laughs> I took. I took towels <laughs> and like tried to like wrap them to like cover up any sort of noise wrap from escaping. Them. Like no, no, just like on the sides to try and muffle like if there You're was a sound studio. <laughs> <laughs> just so if there was a bowl fart, the towels would maybe absorb some of it, so it wouldn't be quite as loud. And I turned the sink on, and but there was no. What was so great about it is I did it, and I was like, okay, they may have heard something, blah blah, blah. and and I was like, but you know what, no. Oh, maybe they didn't. I'm sure they didn't care. An hour later, the uh, another person went in and did it. <laughs> Bull farts. It was like <laughs> so loud. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's no way they didn't hear that from me. Do you uh-huh. know what I mean? I was like, it was like, what? it was the loudest. Did most you know? Echoey bathroom. Uh-huh. Did you know you had like one big ball fart that was coming? I knew. You know when you can tell, like, <laughs> but you, you but can I'm saying, tell it was not going to be a quiet one. It was going to be like, yeah, because I've been holding it in so, so long. But it was one that you knew it was coming. At least one. Okay. Pro tip: small thing. It's such a simple thing. Just time that, just flush. Oh, right as listen, you release man, that I've person. learned since those days. I that's do that what a lot I, now. I, I dated someone who was bulimic, and that's how they hit oh, their throwing God. up. Oh, <laughs> pro tip. Well, we <laughs> pro tip. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, uh, plugs. plugs. This is coming out next Tuesday, so this is going to be uh, August 23rd. Anything you want to plug? Uh, okay, so two things. Uncle Function in New York City, Tuesday, September 13th at Asylum NYC. And then uh, Uncle Function in L.A., Dynasty Typewriter, uh, September 20th, um, Tuesday, September 20th at uh, uh, with special guest Caleb Huron. It's going to be a fun yes, show. Yes, very exciting. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, we, this is the day that something premieres that involves this oh, podcast we can't that I say still can't talk about, but it's, it's cool. Uh, you've, you've seen it on my Instagram at this point. I think I can say it at this point cause it's going to be on today. Yeah. Don't fucking tell us. Don't tell anyone. I'm Josh. on the fucking podcast down. All right. Uh, this will be where we cut. If I have to cut it out. Uh, uh, the downside is now doing a weekly live show with Amazon's new app. It's called Amp. Woo! You can download it on your phone. It's going to be uh, from four to five p uh, four to five EST Eastern Standard Time. Four to five every Tuesday, uh, live with guests. And then, if you missed it or you want to hear it again, we are going to be uploading those episodes onto the Patreon. We're reactivating the Patreon. And you can get access to all the old episodes ad-free, all the bonus episodes Russell and I did where we said stuff that it will get us in trouble someday. <laughs> Listen, clip it, put it out online, <laughs> get us fired, because we don't need the industry anymore. We're on AMP. Woo! Hot damn, so I'm coming on, on this show at the right time. Damn. You guys are just about to blow up, huh? And, yeah. and if, if you want to see me, I'll be headlining uh, Side Splitters Comedy Club this weekend, August 25th through 27th, doing a three-show day on the 27th. Three-show day. Tampa, Florida. Are you just doing the same set three times in a row? No, I'm fucking, I'm fucking around. I'm I stealing gotta learn more poop about stories and telling them on stage. No! Just poop stories. <laughs> I can't do stand-up yet. Don't take my stories. That's all I have. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I was in Ace Ventura Junior. No! <laughs> and I went online and they He's called me lying. a fat fucking cunt. <laughs> um, anything you want to plug? Uh, I, I, If any listeners uh, are in New York and are interested in improv and doing comedy, I host the uh, Pit uh, Late Night Improv Jam uh, every Friday at 9 o'clock. Uh, at the pit loft, and it's super fun. And uh, I don't know, we can have some fun, do some improv. Uh, and other than that, my Twitter at Flitter, um, and I just post some sketches and stuff there. And just look out for me; I'm still acting, and hopefully, might be some things in the works, roles, movies. Hopefully, yeah. That was fantastic. Thank you for sharing <laughs> all that with us. Yeah. And just remember, out there. Uh, uh, no matter how well or successful your life is going, someday you may also be hosting an improv jam <laughs> at the pit loft. This is the downside. One, two, three.